Okay, by now you're wondering why is Dave Miller standing in the chancel in front of you? Uh, Pastor Cheryl is home ill and unable to join us today. She abdicated her throne to her husband, Horace. So he, Horace will be uh, taking her place to read the gospel and to uh, deliver her sermon that she wrote for the week. And unfortunately, she's just not feeling well enough to come today. So last minute change of plans and we'll make it all happen just fine. So a few announcements. Um, this is New Member Sunday. Uh, after the sermon, we'll be having a reception. I not a reception, but we'll bring the new members up and we'll welcome them into our congregation. Uh, don't forget about the Advent services on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. Um, we'll see how that works, uh, how past Pastor feels, whether that will be a pre-recorded or whether there will be a live, but we'll, we'll get announcements out, uh, I'm sure, by email during the week to see exactly how this is done. Charlie Brown tree and the Christmas tree for the needy. We've received several requests for help from local agencies about a serious need in people's lives. Please continue your generous giving. It's such a joy to be able to meet some basic human needs for people who are in difficult circumstances. And you've really stepped up to the plate in this respect, and thank you for that. And then um, pledge cards that were mailed out for annual giving. Many have been returned, but if you have yours and have not yet returned it, please do so. We appreciate the great response so far. It helps us to budget for the coming year, but please, if you have a chance, if you're keeping the same, that's okay. Just send it in and say, keep the same. Uh, if you're making a little increase, that's wonderful. Uh, if circumstances mean you mean a little decrease, that's okay too. We're all in this as a family, and if you know we we will do this together, and it, everything that you can help us with information will make the budgeting process easier. Let's take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, we never know what the next day brings for us. Today was a little bit of a surprise. Today we pray for the health of Pastor Cheryl so she can get back here as soon as possible and again lead her, her flock of sheep here at First English. We ask you to bless this service. We ask you to bless our new members and all of us here attending that we're emboldened by your word to share your love with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the, the presence, presence of one, of one another, another, we, we confess, confess our sin before, before you. We, we fail, fail in believing in that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness. God in Christ Jesus has looked up with favor upon us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, our sins are forgiven. We are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens us anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. We praise you, O God.
for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light these candles on the wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. 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 of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. And also with you. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. From the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the whole peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord Feast of victory for our God, Alleluia. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to 
to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure this day of coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Luke 1, uh, 68 through 79, uh, read responsibly, uh, responsibly as printed. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have, you have raised up for us, for us a mighty Savior, Savior born, born of the house of your Savior. servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Children, time for the very brief this morning children's message. Pastor normally has quite a bit more put together. This is being done on the fly, so. <laughs> Don't you remember me? I was here a couple months ago when I get to see you and talk to you. I'm Dave. Now she remembers. <laughs> you know what we forgot, though? Say hi, Faith. Hi, Faith. She likes that. She's really happy about that. So when you woke up this morning, Faith, what did you see? Snow. <laughs> yes, you did. And you know what's neat about snow? Snow is one of the prettiest things God has given us on earth. When it covers the fields and the dirt of the farm fields and covers the rooftops, it's the most prettiest thing in the world. Don't you think so? Yes, you do. But snow can also cause traffic accidents, delays in flights to see loved ones, all kinds of problems. So is snow good? Or is snow not so good? She said it depends. It depends on your perspective, right? If you're thinking about going out in the yard and building a snowman, it's the funnest thing you can do. But if you're walking down the sidewalk and you slip and hurt yourself on the ice, that's not so fun, is it? I don't remember how to shake it. No. <laughs> Children, as you think about 
Advent and Jesus and all of that, Jesus is the one constant, the one thing that is always good. So many beautiful things in our world can be good and at other times can be not so good. Jesus is always good. She likes thinking about Jesus. And she knows he's good and she can't wait for Christmas. Why is that? Silly presents. <laughs> and church and the baby Jesus in the manger. Let's pray. Lord, as we face winter and as we come toward Christmas, we are very happy that you provide beauty in our world, but we ask you to keep us safe. Keep us safe from snow, keep us safe from ice, possibly driving on it, but also let us appreciate the blessings of, of beautiful snow in the trees and on the rooftops. And foremost of all, let us think about Jesus in the manger and look forward to that day when we can celebrate his coming on Christmas. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in the gospel acclamation if you could stand. the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria, and Trachonotus, Nitus, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priest of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and the flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, here I am. I'm glad to um, represent Cheryl in this. She's not well, so I take her place today. But here's, um, we're going to be looking at getting ready and turning around. That's the title of the sermon, of the message. Pastor Cheryl shares these thoughts with us. She says, there are two what-ifs in my childhood that still evoke powerful memories for me. What if Jesus was coming to our house for a visit? And what if Jesus comes back tonight? These questions always struck fear into my heart, although I kind of like the idea of Jesus coming to visit. But fear, nonetheless, because I knew I'd have to get ready either way. If he was coming for a visit, well then, I'd better head right up to my room and dust everything. 
get my toys in order, and make my bed. If he was coming back for the second time, I knew he would see right into my heart, and he would know if I obeyed my mom and my dad that day. That scared me. That meant I'd have to get my heart ready. And even as a young child, I had a pretty active conscience. I'd need to shape up if I wanted to be ready for Jesus. That's what Pastor Cheryl shares with us. Now there's a sense in all of us that Jesus Christ walk through the door or burst the clouds or our true selves would be on display. It would be nice to clean up a little before he got here, right? You know, ask for forgiveness for the wrongs and fix the things that aren't right. Well, that's what Advent is about. Getting ready for Christ's arrival. When God came as a human baby, pushed from the darkness into the dingy light of a broken world, what does it mean to get ready for that? Normally, at this time of the year, we don't say, are you getting ready for Jesus? We say instead, are you getting ready for Christmas? And that usually means do all the stuff, get them all done. In your house, get you decorated. Have you bought all the presents? Did you go to the parties, host the parties, buy the food, buy, bake the cookies, put up the tree? But we seldom, if ever, ask each other, are you ready for Jesus to be born in your heart anew? Have you asked the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart to reveal to you what needs to be confessed and forgiven? Have you repented? That is, have you changed direction and moved away from self-centeredness and toward loving God. Toward loving your neighbor as yourself. Are you ready for the most important, most thrilling, most life-changing event in history? The coming of Jesus into the world so that all the people, including you and me, could be put right with God on the deepest level of our beings, that is. Are you ready? Am I ready? And if not, what will it take to get ready? Maybe we should start by looking more closely at our text that precedes it. There has been 400 years of silence between Israel's last prophet and the appearance of John the Baptist, 400 years. The Jewish people had passed down God's promise of coming, the coming Messiah from a generation to the next. But 400 years is a long time. It's a long time to perform rituals and obey laws without fresh words from God. It's a long time to wait. A long time to be born waiting and to die waiting. And somehow to still believe that God will fulfill his promise. A priest named Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth had continued to wait, to believe in God's goodness. Even though God had never blessed them with children, as you probably know, this would be a heartache and 
a shame for some couples in this culture. And it was to them too, not having children. And now they are past childbearing years and the hope is truly gone. But an angel appears to Zechariah when he was doing his priestly duties. The angel announces that Elizabeth will give birth to a son. You will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, this child. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord, their God. With the spirit and the power of Elijah, he will go before him, before Jesus, to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The child would fulfill the prophecy of another Testament prophet, Old Testament prophet, that is Isaiah. Isaiah said, the voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. In essence, their son, Zachariah, and Elizabeth's son will be the last Jewish prophet. John will be the last Jewish prophet. He will be tran the transition into the new era that the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. He will preach repentance from sins, to the people who haven't heard a fresh word from God in their lifetimes. He will shake them from their spiritual slumber, their privilege of being Abraham's children. His words will reveal their sin to them. He will baptize them to forgive their sins, and then he will announce the coming of the Messiah and introduce them to Jesus the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. The gospel that I read previously begins with the names of some big-time Roman rulers because the Jewish people are living on the Roman rule. Here's what we need to notice. The five named Romans are on the world stage in the news every day and all day on cable news. Herod did this. Oh, did you hear her? how he married his brother's wife? And Tiberius, what a scoundrel. Had some military success, but eventually he was an embarrassment even to the Romans. And Annas and Caiaphas, Jewish high priest who had been appointed by the Romans, those guys would do just about anything to keep the peace with Rome, including crucifying Jesus a few years later. Now the big-time leaders had no idea they weren't the real story, the story that would make eternal difference. They thought they were all that mattered and that they were completely wrong in that they were. You see, even though the secular rulers and some of the religious rulers were powerful and seemed really important, Luke reveals there's something much more important going on. Those rulers would come and go. In fact, they'd all be dead by the time Luke writes this gospel. But the two miracle babies, John and the Baptist and Jesus, those two nondescript babies who were born to a lowly Jewish 
to lowly Jewish parents would change everything. Not just the world, but also the hearts of people. They would call people then and now back to the heart of God. It's as if they are calling us today from places of great difficulty to high mountains and deep valleys, the rugged terrain of everyday living in the midst of a pandemic, they would call us from those difficult places. The pandemic and conspiracy theories that we hear. The day in and day out challenge of keeping our heads on straight and living with integrity in a world that wants us to, wants to keep us from Jesus and also from loving our neighbors. Now, if John the Baptist were here today, he'd proclaim to us, stop thinking you have a corner of faith because you have been born and raised in Lutheran or Catholic or any other denomination or faith. Stop congratulating yourself on good church involvement or the perfect church attendance or whatever makes you feel holier than other people. That's what they would say. I'll baptize you for the forgiveness of your sins, but Jesus is coming to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's going to go all the way to the depths of your heart. He's going to make you new. He's going to put you right with God. So, get ready. Jesus is coming. As we heard last week, we prepared you in the Advent for Christ in the manger. But more importantly... We prepare for his return to the earth. We weren't here for the first coming, but we might be here for the second. So it's time to make our path straight. Let's listen to John the Baptist. Let's listen to the Holy Spirit. Let's open ourselves to confession and repentance, change and God's love. Why don't we do it right now? Only the Spirit knows what our individual hearts need. Let's ask the Spirit to reveal to us and to prepare us for Christ as we remember his coming and prepare for the second. Please repeat this prayer after me. Almighty God, Holy Spirit and lover of our souls, we open our heart to you. Show us where we are wrong. Hear our confession of sin and empower us with your love. So we can return your love and love our neighbors as ourselves. Please prepare our hearts for your coming. Amen. Continue with the hymn of the day, 249, on Jap Jordan's Bank, the Baptist cry, verses 1 to 3 and 5.
this time, I'd like to, you may be seated. I'd like to invite all the new members of the congregation who are being honored today to come forward uh, into this area here. Yeah, why don't you come up a step and um, Darlene can stay at the bottom here as well. Mark, you can come over here too. We got more coming this way, so. Hey, why don't you come across and make Mark feel not quite so lonely over there. <laughs> Sorry for all the stuff in the way. It wouldn't have been here. Very good. You have a flyer in your bulletin, and it tells you who the people are. Um, but we would certainly want to, uh, in the name of Pastor Cheryl and our congregation, I get a very distinct honor today. I'm the music director type personish organist and choir director, um, but I get to be the one who welcomes you, and I'm very proud that I'm able to do that, um, to welcome new members as well as reinstated members who are back with us. We're, we would love to see you back. It's always great. So our new members, and maybe you can maybe do like this when we say so that people know who you are, uh, if, and I'll read them all. Maybe they're not all here with the snow and stuff. Mary Benick, Lou Berg, Kale and Bailey Clark and Luca on the side there. Bill and Darlene Dine are returning to membership. Roger and Dawn Duco. John and Sandy Agarer here. Uh, Bruce and Alita Gross. Mark Purcell. And uh, Ryan and Stephanie Ross and Annabelle, Zelda, Nikki, and Jason. And it's Conkle, and she had it on the note says Ross, and I thought, it's Conkle, but the, okay. The kids are Ross. So it's the Ross Conkles. We are so happy that you have joined our congregation. Before we read through the script that's in the sermon there, uh, Clark's pastor has a baptized we live Lutheranism as a way of life gift for each of you. Uh, the and And here she has the Conkle and Ross family. Perfect. And not least by any means, Mark Purcell. And we'll get the uh, books to uh, to the others as we go. With the whole church and our new members, let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Speaking for pastor and our congregation, I would ask sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? I, congregation, people of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life 
in Christ. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Thank you. In the... Yeah. Don't know about you out there, but uh, in the almost 10 years I've been back at First English, I can't recall this many people joining our flock at one time, other than maybe a confirmation. But uh, this is a wonderful thing. So I'm not going to shake your hand in thinking about COVID and all those other things. But please, there is a reception out in the uh, narthex afterwards. Please take time to say hello to all our new friends. Thank you, thank you very much. You may return to your seats. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Please stand. <clears throat> your response to hear us, O God, is your mercy is great. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. We pray especially today for continued healing for those in Waukesha, especially for those whose loved ones have died or were injured. We also pray for those in Michigan who've been traumatized by the school shooting this past week. We ask for your comfort and mercy to those families who've lost their children, and also for the many students, staff, police officers, and first responders who have been deeply affected by these incidents. Enable each of their communities to heal. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Please use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. Many needs become more obvious as the holidays approach. Make us willing to care for others and give generously of ourselves and our resources. Hear us, O oh God. Your yeah, mercy is great. We pray for those who are ill, especially Michael Musconis, who is recovering from heart surgery and waiting for a transplant kidney. Give him and his family strength and courage as he continues to face serious health conditions. We pray as well for Ted, uh, Ted Stewart and his battle with cancer. Grant him and his family peace and wisdom. We also ask for healing and wholeness for all those in our congregation and for those we name in our hearts right now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bless our new and reinstated members today. We're so grateful for their presence and participation among us. You have brought us together to enrich all of our lives and to strengthen each other in the faith. Continue to build us up as the body of Christ for you in our world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O oh God. 
your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive all these prayers and those within our hearts. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. We'll have the taking of the offering. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> the peace of Christ be with you always. <laughs> you could have just done it. <laughs> All right. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them, our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now join me in saying the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We didn't have communion today because uh, we don't have a pastor here to bless the sacrament. But I do want to have us sing the communion hymn listed in your bulletin, hymn 262, Wait for the Lord. It's a short, simple hymn. We'll just sing it through three times. Continue with the blessing. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing 
so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Our sending hymn is a very hopeful hymn. All earth is hopeful. Uh, hymn 266, verses 1 through 3. Please stand if you are able for our final hymn. And you can dance a little if you want, sway. peace, Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Please take in the uh, refreshments in the narthex and welcome our new members.